Well, welcome to this Mac Support Cast. My name is Larry, and today we're going to have a little bit of fun. We've been looking at a lot of different things in different applications with menus and lots of different things. So let's have a little fun with some photographs. I found a free application that I've been playing around with to do something called HDR with these photographs. So what is HDR? Well, let's go ahead and bring up the good old Wikipedia and we can talk about it. It is really high dynamic range imaging or just simple HDR as an HDRI. It allows you to take multiple images, merge them and render them out with some tone mapping techniques to get uh, some of these pictures you go, how the heck did they do that? So uh, you don't have to even buy this software, though the company that will show you has some other things you may want to look at, uh, but they are offering this for free. So let's go ahead and look at these photos right here. We have minus four stops on your aperture, same thing here, uh, two plus two and plus four. So it says overexposed, and this is way underexposed. So we got the range here. We can put it into this kind of software, begin to work with it, and we can come right into this look right in here, which is pretty amazing. That's the kind of thing you've seen out there. So I'm going to go ahead and run this back down into the dock. I'm going to go ahead and bring up the software here. And this is the software. It's pretty simple. This is there are more sophisticated uh, versions out there and plugins for professionals, but hey, this is a lot of fun here. So it was a very simple window. We can drag and drop images in here, or we can just go say add photos. Let me just run this down to low here in case it needs that. I, I don't want to have that processing. Now, I had already made a couple early and I'll show you what they are so we don't have to wait through the whole process of uh, exporting this out. But um, I had used all four pictures before and that caused some problems uh, for me. And I'll show you what happens just with two of them and I can explain the issue here. So let's go ahead and say open goes ahead and brings these right in here. Now look at the slightly fuzzy here. It's not aligned properly. And that's because my tripod moved a little bit. You do need a tripod to do this. I set up along Oak Creek and I started taking shots and changing the apertures, but I obviously just jostled the, com the camera just a little bit. So you're going to really have to watch that and very carefully work with these and get as, you know, as still as you can. Fortunately, there's this button right here that says Align Photos. So I'm going to go ahead and click that and let's let it process that. This will take a few minutes, so we'll come back when it's done. Okay, so here we are back. Look how much sharper that is, especially out here in the middle of the photograph. Everything's a lot better off. So let's take a look at the two photos before I start making adjustments here. We have this one that's obviously underexposed a bit. It's nice in the distance there. And this one is exposed more to get more here in the foreground, but then you start to lose the colors out in the distance. Now, normally I would like to have at least three photographs and you can do even more. But I did find is that the shift wasn't just a little fuzzy there's actually two of the photographs I was hoping to use had gotten off a lot more and I didn't know it. Uh, I'll show you the effect of that when I show you the export I did earlier. So it, I thought these are a really good lesson to have here to show this process of doing this. So we'll just use these two for now and I'll make some adjustments. Then we'll jump over and look at the final product that is exactly what I've got here. So we grab this slider. If I take it all the way down, we have this look. If I go all the way to the top, we get this, which is way overdone. So what we want to do just start creeping up here and keep going until we get something that's very pleasing. Now you're starting to see the lighting coming into the foreground here. Let me just pulse that up and down a little bit by moving the slider back and forth. And we're starting to get real close. Now I'm going to watch the center of the picture out there over the water and just see where the color is. Right in there, the color is really starting to stand out uh, on the water. We're just about there. I might only want to take it down a little because we're starting to get kind of artificial here in the foreground. Let me take it down a little. It's one of those things. It's a judgment call as far as I'm in this uh, situation. 
So where do we want to leave that? We want to leave it down here like this. This is pretty nice. We could do this or we could come back up into this area. We get some color coming in. So, you know, it's what you, you want to do here. But look at this. We've got that nice foreground now. We've lightened in the shadows. We also have the colors in the background there. And you can play anywhere in that range of about half to three quarters on this, this set of photos. It's going to be different uh, maybe with yours. So we could save that by just clicking right here. They also have their uh, application that they sell, which is Fantastic Photos. It does a lot of things. And let's go ahead and bring up my panel here, this Finder panel. And let's go ahead and take a look at these two different ones. Number one was this one. Let me go ahead and click the space bar and bring this up. It's a trick for you if you don't remember that one. You click on a file and hit the space bar and it'll jump up movies or images. And this is what happened when I had all four photos together. It was just too much offset and color differential. So with this one, if I was going to keep it, I would probably crop it. Uh, but this is what happened when those two were too far off and it couldn't happen. So let's go over to number two, the ones that's very similar with the two we did now. And here that is. Now it's not perfect. Uh, this this is a tree here in the water, a reflection. I think it's, it's a little blurry. But I think overall it is kind of fun photograph. But it was a good experiment to play with. So this happened. I don't have that line over here because they were close enough that the alignment software could put it together for us. So there it is. That That is the HD artist. So let's go ahead and see. Do I have my... There it is. I'm going to bring up their website here. And this is the HD Artist website here. You can get this for free. It's the ohanaware.com, H-D-R-T-I-S-T. -T. You can see right here. And here's some of the stuff they're showing. You can see the car. Let's go ahead and let that roll for a minute. Look at this night shot, bringing the colors in by taking different exposures. So if you get those real crisp, you can really do a lot. And they show you uh, how this is done and various things in here. So I would say, hey, go get a copy and play with this. It's a lot of fun and have at it. So there's your fun cast for today. I like playing with photographs, and I always wondered how people did this. Well, it's done with HDR and with software like this. All right, see you in the next cast.